appreciate you guys being here and covering our team and and uh, uh, my my enthusiasm and our players is enthusiasm for for this coming year, which I'm going to try and um, express to you guys today. Now that I've got some time with our team under our belt, uh, so um, uh, my my opinions in the summer uh, were genuine about this team. Um, as far as them as individuals and, and their enthusiasm for being here, um, we, we didn't have a full team to the last 10 days of summer. So there were a couple guys that I didn't know how they were going to fit in into what we were doing. Uh, but now after uh, preseason workouts, um, in the weight room, conditioning, uh, and then obviously being on the court, uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm even more excited than I was back in the summer when when I was trying trying to get to know these guys as human beings, so it's uh, I'm extreme. Our depth is is fun. Our physicality, which is something that we've lost over the last couple of years, uh, is in place again. Uh, it's uh, uh, we got size. I, I uh, we sh we got guys that are shot makers. We've we've got a freshman that that's going to become uh, he's he as he adjusts to college basketball he's going to do what he did in high school he is an elite scorer in Devin Carter um, so I'm I'm and then the first year guys which we obviously I, I, uh, I don't we've got eight how many first year eight nine nine uh, I'm trying to understand their talents as players. Because as a coach, my job is from day one, not in February, from day one, uh, to create a structure that puts them in a place so they can play through strengths. And um, you don't change. You, you hear coaches and, and people opinionate all the time that you change your system to your talent. You don't change your system. You tweak your system to your talent. If you ever deviate from who you are as a coach and what the fundamentals of your program are about, uh, you're doing an injustice to your 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 team, uh, but what you do is you make adjustments within how you play to fit the talents of certain individuals. And quick example: when we had PJ and Sandarius, two really big guards. If you remember us playing, anytime you defended them with small guards, we play them from the elbows, and and that's something that I haven't done in a couple of years because we didn't have anyone on our team that played with that kind of talent from the elbow. So. Um, you know, A.J. Lawson played on speed, so we tried to run him as much as we can uh, rather than play him uh, through places of size and physicality. So it's, it's uh, uh, but, but that's what we're supposed to do, and that's what my job is each and every year. It's a heck of a lot easier when you coach somebody for two, three years. It's a little more complicated when you do it for a couple months, but that's okay. It's, uh, uh, that's the enthusiasm of our business that it changes every single year. It's uh, there's not two years uh, that they're the same. Uh, you manage teams differently. You want your players to grow, so you as a coach have to continue to grow, and uh, that's a never-ending story. So I'm excited and and happy to tell you as much as I can or as much as you want to know about our team. And with all due respect, if you ask me questions about last year, I'm going to answer them, but I might be short because I'm past last year. I'm into this year. Frank, uh, through 10 years, it's always been about learning your defense mm -hmm. first and then your offense. So with this group, and I know it's early, how is that coming together with learning your defensive system? <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, Dave, one of the hardest things I've ever done professionally, not as a human being, uh, was basically step away from everything I believe in defensively last year. And uh, I had to make major adjustments midstream um, just because we, to play the way we play takes an unbelievable amount of repetition, defensively I'm talking about. And we, we didn't have that repetition. It takes continuity. It takes guys to, to understand the speed and the unity that you got to have. That's not developed in games. That's developed every single day in your practices. Um, but, uh, but we did what we had to do. Obviously, nothing I did last year worked. So uh, that just fell in line with everything else. But we've... Uh, uh, we, we've, I've talked defense with this team earlier than I usually do because uh, 
we got too many first year guys. And let's be honest, guys like Trayvon and, and then Keyshawn and Jermaine and Wildens, we all got away. And Trayvon is basically his first year. He wasn't here preseason last year. And, and, and all those other guys, we got away from who we were defensively. So I've tried to recenter them and then communicate our verbiage to the new guys so they comprehend uh, where to start and the language that I use. And, and, and when I say language, I, I'm not talking about the ones you guys like to have fun with. I'm talking about the actual basketball X and O language that we use in our program. And um, <coughs> uh, I believe you guys are coming to practice or it's open for you uh, to be here on Tuesday, I believe. By the way, Emily's going to let you guys know uh, I'm a man of my word. I keep my word. Uh, so it'll be available uh, about an hour before practice, uh, the lunch and Cuban food I promised everybody. Uh, so our staff will be there with you guys to so just interact and, and you know, spend some time before we actually come on the court. But Monday's the first day where we're going to go, you know what, to the wall with our defensive principles. And uh, uh, so when you're in here on Tuesday, you're, you're, I would strongly recommend that when you leave the football press conference, you bring a face mask with you because there'll be balls flying all over the place, and not from me, but from turnovers. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I, you know, this is what I'll say on that, Dave. I'm, I'm, my enthusiasm for this team is their willingness to learn what we do. And um, I asked two players in a meeting, and, and they've cleared it with me that it was okay for me to count, because I don't, I try not to. I'm not perfect, obviously to share private conversations with the public, unless the players are comfortable with it. But one of our first meetings we had this year, I asked two players. I asked Wildens Levesque, why'd you stay? And he said, because I believe in who we are and I believe in you. Then I asked James Reese, I said, why'd you leave a starting job at a team that won the league two years in a row, that won a game in the NCAA tournament to come here? He said, because it was always a dream to play here and play for you. So. That's the mindset of the guys on our team. And when you walk on the court every single day and you guys, whether they're new or returning guys, they have an enthusiasm for who we are, they learn. So teaching becomes a little bit easier. So I think we're, we're way ahead of where I thought we'd be offensively. I'll have a better opinion defensively in the next seven to 10 days. Frank, <clears throat> sorry, last year the point guard position was kind of up and down for you guys. Some guys really struggled there. What are your opinions of now that you've kind of seen guys in practice now about that position specifically, both offensively and being able to guard the ball on the perimeter? Yeah, it's, it's really hard to, to coach basketball when point guard play is disconnected from the coach. And that's what our point guard play was last year. Just, uh, it's not a knock on players, it's just Last year, whatever way you want to connect the dots, that's, that's perfectly fine. The year before, Jermaine connected with me. And we played him at the point, and we became a pretty darn good team. Uh, last year, we, I just could never get him or anyone else to connect with me. And, and the biggest reason for that is lack of practice, just not being able to have any continuity. Uh, so we were always disconnected. If, if you remember to my fresh, and I just told you guys about keeping my word, it's something I work really hard at. Um, and my first press conference ever, I spoke about that my team was always going to play as hard as anybody and be unbelievably connected in how we played. I'd probably use different words, but that was the essence of what I said, the only thing I ever promised. And my team last year didn't play very hard and we were very disconnected. And I don't, I don't, I don't, and it was all on me. I don't take uh, not keeping my word uh, very lightly. It's something very important to me. And uh, I'm not there yet with our point guard play. We've got a lot of uh, different kind of players. Like Jermaine is completely different than Jacoby. Jacoby's completely different than Chico. Eric Stevenson, who can also slide to the point, is completely different than all three of those guys. Um, so we've got different options. Here's what I know I do have. Unbelievable eagerness to learn. I, I, I got to be careful how I state this because in today's day and age, whenever someone expresses something, 
The part that's highlighted is not what they express. The part that's highlighted in social media or publicly whatever is what they don't say. And, and that's unfortunate because that means that we can never express any truth because no one focuses on what I say. It's always what I don't say that matters. I have spent more time in my office with these players just learning about each other, about life, about my history, about how we play. Uh, my point guards have come in to ask me to see film on old point guards I've coached to see them play than I have the last two years. So I'm not saying the previous two years are bad. I'm just saying that's why I'm excited about what's in front of us with these guys. And uh, that's why I prefaced my answer with what I said. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't, uh, we're in a difficult moment right now because everybody wants uh, the person responsible for something to speak the truth. So when you express the truth, what you say is not highlighted. It's what you don't say that gets put out there. And I, um, these guys have been, they've gone out of their way, whether it's the freshmen, the transfers, or the returning guys. They've gone out of their way to connect with me. And as a coach, I really appreciate that. I don't know if I answered your question, but point guard right now, if we had a game tomorrow, I don't doubt. I'm just trying to figure that that spot out. I, I'm excited about everyone that, that can play at that spot. Thank you. Uh, what's the health of the team? Have you had any COVID issues? And uh, where are you with vaccinations on the team? Yeah, I, I uh, health, let's, let's do the easy one first. Keyshawn kind of nicked up a knee, so he's out for about a week. Uh, this happened two days ago, so he'll probably and he had a, a death in the family, so he's actually leaving town tonight uh, to go home for, for that moment. Uh, so by the time he gets back, he should be good to go. Uh, other than that, I think we're okay. Um, uh, have we had COVID issues? Uh, it's been a while since we have a COVID moment on our team. Um, I, I, uh, I, I don't know what... I don't, I don't know if there's an answer for how to control that possibility. Uh, I, six months ago, I think everyone in this country had hoped that, that with the vaccine, we're all good to go. And I think we're all starting to realize that that still doesn't uh, uh, prevent much. Uh, the one positive thing is that if, I'll use me, if someone on our team tests positive and I happen to be with them since I am vaccinated, I don't have to isolate for two weeks. So it gives us a chance to continue to, to conduct practices and move forward. Um, as far as our team, we're not fully vaccinated. Um, I don't know if I'm comfortable telling you how many are not. I'll say we're almost to total value. Why not? I'm not going to tell you who to. Everyone else is vaccinated. I guess if I said people's names, that'd be, but if I just tell you the number, you should be, I, I, I don't think I'm disrespecting anybody's personal space on that one. Coach, obviously we can sense the enthusiasm you have for this team and their eagerness to learn, but what things do you look for in practice early on that their eagerness and enthusiasm is translating to production with what you guys want to do within your structure? Yeah. Uh, Joe, there's just a, at the end of the day, 18, 19, 20-year-olds, they don't want to hang out with a 55-year-old man in their free time. It just, it is what it is. We, we, don't, we don't speak about a lot of the same things. The, the music they listen to is not necessarily what I uh, like. Uh, what they do socially is completely different than what I do socially. But we do have to connect. And if you don't connect with your team, then we can't complain when they listen to other people. And, and, and that's, that's the thing that's got me excited. These guys are genuinely concerned and interested with making a connection with us, not just me, us, and representing the uniform, how we play, uh, understanding what I want. Uh, th th those things are so important. They're so important. It's, uh, it's really, it, it's, that's been the, the, 
the, the interesting thing in my coaching career, because I started so young that I was one of them. Now I'm no longer one of them. I'm that crusty old you-know-what that complains about everything all the time rather than, than just understand what they're doing. I, everything they do bothers me now because we've grown, I've grown away from being 18, 19. Um, but the beauty is that being around them makes me feel young. And, and, and hopefully I can share life lessons that, that they embrace and appreciate. This team appreciates those conversations. And, and, uh, um, and then from a basketball standpoint, uh, there's two things I love. I love guys that are ultra competitive. I, you, I, I, you know, Joe, we've come a long way from that press conference going into my third year, I believe, where we had our first winning season and you, you put me out the door already. And now, now we're coming off the most miserable year of my coaching career and you're celebrating my enthusiasm. It's, uh, um, which I appreciate tremendously, but um, I love competitors. I don't like, I'll get there when I get there. That, I can't be around people like that. That drives me nuts. I like go-getters. I like guys that want to get this done today. And we've got guys that want to do that. Secondly, I, my teams always are physical. We had lost our physicality. Even two years ago, even though we became a good team, we had lost our physicality. And, and I'm, I'm uh, I, 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 it, you tell me there's something that my team's got to have. Physicality so important. We, we had lost our physicality, and because of how we play, that's so important in what we do. And physicality is not grabbing, it's not pushing, it's not holding, it's not fouling. Physicality is not accepting. Don't accept screening. Don't accept boxing out. Don't accept that guy cutting harder than you. That, that, that's where my, my, my whole physicality comes from, and, and we had kind of lost that. Um, so, um, I, I think we got that back. So it's, uh, but but the biggest thing, man, I'm just telling, these these guys. They've rejuvenated me after a a year that was very difficult for me, and they've rejuvenated me with their enthusiasm. I've always got enthusiasm, but having these guys just as enthusiastic as me has has kind of got me excited for what's in front of us. Uh, Frank, you were talking about being connected with Jermaine a couple of years ago when he was when he was a point guard, and I know last year, especially from a shooting perspective, was a little difficult for him. I know you talked about some of the off-court stuff he's dealing with too with his family. Yep. Just curious, what what have you observed with him so far? What kind of season do you expect out of him? And just what do you think he maybe learned from last year? How has he grown from that experience? Um. Whenever he's available to you, I'd, I'd rather you ask him so he can express his journey because he'll do it a lot better than I will. Uh, but as far as right now, I, I, last year was just not difficult for me. It was difficult for everybody on our team. And Jermaine's about winning. Jermaine likes to win. I think last year, off the court, on the court, uh, just never connected, and 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 then the spirit. That's why losing. That's why. That's why you have to, and and that's the the slippery slope that we live as coaches now. It used to be easy for us to fight the losing bug, as coaches. Today's day and age, because I've said this before, there's only two ways to overcome that bug. Patience and education, or making things really, really, really difficult. Well, those two avenues are not healthy to keep your job in today's day and age. You, you, do, you make things really difficult to eliminate the losing bug, everyone cries and complains. Coach gets fired. Uh, and you tell me who's got patience for education these days. You know, we expect everyone to get a high school diploma in six months, not go through the 12 years of schooling and learning. And, um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's gotten complicated. Um, I, I, I feel that Jermaine, what we went through last year, impacted him more than anyone on our team. Um, he didn't have a very good spring. 
basketball wise when he got been he's dealing with some family matters uh, late in the summer I think now that he's here full time the enthusiasm of those first year guys their desire to, to understand what we do uh, has kind of rekindled his fire a little bit he he's coming off I told him after Tuesday's workout best two practices he's ever had in his time here were Monday and Tuesday of this week we were off yesterday so uh, I'm hoping he piggy piggybacks on those two practice and and makes it three in a row today he, he was really really good Tuesday um, and uh, uh, it's com you should see him and Stevenson going at each other in practice it, it's it's fun that's that's I, I don't know about you guys it's the way I was raised I didn't have brother I had a sister I didn't have brothers but I had the dudes in my neighborhood and they weren't easy on me but the last thing they ever wanted me was to go to the next neighborhood down and not represent our block the right way and 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 that's kind of what we got right now Eric and Jermaine are, and, and and they go at each other and it's unbelievably competitive and when the play's over they dap each other because they're both old they know that they're trying to make each other better it's not a personal competition as to who's better is they're trying to make each other better. Since you mentioned Stevenson, he and Reese are the two new faces that are old guys. And in the past few years, you've had some guys that have really been able to plug in and help you in that regard. But at the same time, I know you always felt like you wish you had them for longer. Talk a little bit about where they are as far as what their experiences at their previous stops have provided them to help prepare them for your system and then where you think they still have to really make up some lost time before this season starts. Yeah, those two guys and A.J. Wilson have probably spent the most amount of time in my office throughout the summer and in the preseason. Um, they get it. They, 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 James and A.J. got one year left. Uh, Eric is going into his fourth year of college. Eric was a starting player on a 24-5 win Wichita State team. Uh, and A.J. was a starting player, Atlantic 10, most improved player, career records at George Mason for a team that actually went through something similar that we went through last year. 17, 18 wins a previous year. Last year kind of disconnected. Um, and then James Reese is... Like I asked him that day, he left a starting job for a conference winning team, uh, the team that won a game in the NCAA tournament. And I don't know if you guys have done this. Go read his quotes in preparation to go play Purdue as a team leader for North Tech, not after the game, before the game. Go read his quotes. What, you know, and that it'll let you win to who he is, the stuff he said before that game. Um, and those three guys have, have brought a competitive spirit uh, to everything we do in the weight room, in running, our individual workouts in the summer, learning. Those guys understand the simplicities of what we do offensively and defensively better than some guys I've coached for four and five years. Uh, that, that's the sense of urgency that they've brought. And... See, as we go through life, there's two kinds of sense of urgencies. It's either sense of urgency for me or sense of urgency for we. Those guys bring a sense of urgency for we. And, and when guys bring that sense of urgency, it kind of permeates. Now, Jacoby Wright, going to be a really good player. Unbelievable spirit. He's dealing with Chico Carter and Jermaine every single day in practice. Like, he'll be in the middle of practice and I'll see his head drop. I'm like, yeah, da, 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 da. You've never dropped your head before. Why are you going to do this now? Because it's really hard. And that's the way it should be. They're, gonna, they're teaching him how to compete right away in a collegiate practice, let alone a collegiate game. Um, same thing with <coughs> Devin Carter. He's guarding Eric Stevenson one play, and then he's got to turn around and guard James Reese the next play. And those two guys play – with unbelievable minds, athleticism, and here. And, and it, it makes it really hard for Devin. It makes those young guys, the, the acceleration to learn, 
the sense of urgency to learn greater. That's what those three guys have brought. I, I, I don't think you asked me about AJ. You spoke about Eric and, and James. I got to add AJ to those two because those three guys, Chico's the same way. Chico's just a little different. Chico's more quiet. He's not as, um, uh, as outgoing from his voice as those other guys are. And he's, he's got to figure that part out. I, I'm, you've heard me say this before, Derek. Not everybody leads or acts the same way. Every leader's different. It, it, some leaders, you can barely hear what they say. Other leaders, you can hear them across town. It, it, you know, it, every, everyone's different. And uh, Chico's done really good, too. But those three guys have brought a sense of urgency to everything we do that I think's permeated on our team. Uh, Coach, you mentioned a lot of new guys coming and joining the team. Just how is everybody meshing together, and how is how's everybody playing like off of each other on the court? <laughs> That's, I think we get along. I really do. Um, I know we get along on the court. Um, with so many new guys, I don't know what's going to happen once the lights come on. That's it's uh, you got. You got the season when no one's around, and then you got the season for those 30 games. Uh, I, I, they make me feel like what my decisions are, they're going to support. I've not been through it with these guys. I got no idea how A.J. Wilson's going to respond on a day where he scores four points, gets three rebounds, and Trayvon Minot plays more minutes than him. I, I don't know how he's going to respond to that day. Uh, I, I got no idea how Eric Stevenson is going to respond in a game where he goes 0 for 11. I, so uh, those are all – that's why when you coach experienced teams, not, not experienced just that they've played games, but with you, it's a little easier to manage because you know how guys react and respond to certain things, good and bad. Um, you know, there's some guys, Jacob Pullen, who was a great player for us at K-State. His freshman year, we, he, he had a great game. We beat Kansas. Um, and he was a true freshman, had 20 points. We hadn't beaten Kansas number two in the country, I think. Hadn't beaten them at home in 25 years. He makes a huge play down the stretch to, to kind of seal the game for us. Scored 20, if I remember correctly. Come in the next day. We get ready to play Missouri on a quick turn. Had no interest in practicing. None. I'd never been through it with him, so I lost my mind with him. And, and he ended up going into a Missouri game and barely playing because he didn't respond to the way I managed that moment with him. Well, that moment allowed me to understand him better so I can manage him better when he – so now I can be proactive to prevent that moment from happening. Not the Missouri game, his preparation for the Missouri game. He, he was a guy that when he was young, he'd overreact to a good day uh, and think that I've arrived so I can kind of chill. And, and it was a matter of changing that mindset for him a little bit as he went through the journey. So I got no idea of some of these guys, but the, on the court right now, without how many minutes, how many points, social media saying who's good, who's bad, all the voices that we try to manage now to keep out of our players' heads, it seems to me like they really enjoy being around each other. Uh, we, we, just, uh, we just did a retreat this past weekend, uh, and uh, it was really powerful. First time we do it as a staff and players. We've done it just for players. We, you know, Chris Levy Johnson would do it for us, uh, but it's the first time we do it collectively, just, just coaches, staff, and players, nobody else. And uh, uh, it was really powerful. And, um, uh, it's fun when you're around people that are comfortable enough to share the truth. Um, it's, uh, it's the ones that try to deceive you that make you uncomfortable. It's not, at least me, I, when I say you, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about in life. Uh, I, when when I, you put me around people that try to tell me what they, what they, they start saying what they think I want to hear, I get really uncomfortable and lack trust. When you put me in front of somebody that's willing to say the truth and put it right between my eyes, I go hug that person. And that's, that's me, and those are the people I enjoy being around. That, and that's what I sense from these guys. Hey, Frank, you um, dealt with COVID twice last year. How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't 
we're not doctors, we don't know how that unfolds. And what's it like, what's the experience like having Brandon here? Um, uh, you know, Pete, I, I, that's, that's where I struggle with this moment right now that we're in uh, with trying to tell people how they should handle their business. Uh, COVID kicked my ass. I, I can't express it any other way. Um, and, and I had no energy. I, I couldn't eat. Uh, I had arthritic pains. I couldn't hold a basketball. My hands hurt so bad. Uh, but somehow, some way, uh, I've got to do my job. I got hired here to lead. I was taught at a young age that you answer the bell. You don't lay on your back. And I tried to do what I could. I don't say these things now for anyone to feel bad or sorry for me. Are you kidding? You know how lucky I am? Look where I'm at right now compared to some other people that went through worse battles than me. I'm, I, I share that with you to, for my next point. I, I feel great. I'm, 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 I'm so lucky that, that my health is good. I've got an eyebrow and a quarter. Are you kidding me? I had no eyebrows back in February. I look in the mirror. I, how about this? I haven't shaved my head or my face in over a year. I've got, I've got one lone warrior white hair right here, Phil. One. I'm holding on to that SOB for as long as I can. I, I'm not letting my wife said, cut that off. I said, are you kidding me? That's my, that's my, that's uh, the, the dumb and dumber line. I, I got one eyebrow back and this one a little bit. And I got, I said, so you mean I got a chance? I, you know, yeah. The, but no, I, I, I feel great. I, I'm actually, uh, I, I'm actually able to go in the weight. The weight room allows me to be at peace, just being able to work out. I had a real bad knee. This was nothing to do with COVID. I could barely do anything. Could Moving around was difficult. So the, and the pain, we don't re, when you're living it, you don't realize when you're dealing with nonstop pain, it, it, it kind of defeats your enthusiasm. And, and I was dealing with that. Well, I eliminated that knee pain by having it replaced last June. Um, so all those things combined, it's, it's helped me tremendously. Uh, having Brandon around, I, I think I shared this with you guys. I'm no different than everybody else on our team. Last year, uh, you know, brought doubt into my head. And, um, you know, I spoke about what I asked James Reese. I spoke about what I asked Wildens. I, I didn't ask Brandon in front of everybody, but when he made the decision that he wanted to transfer uh, in my conversations with him, and I'm comfortable speaking about him because he's my player now, but he's also my son. So I'm, I'm a little more comfortable sharing some conversations about him. Um, it, he told me it was always a dream to play for you. So I've, I told my, my wife, I said, as I'm trying to regain trust, if I can't trust my own son, I got major issues in my life. And uh, he's been great. He, he, he's, he's probably played basketball a hell of a lot better than I thought he was going to play uh, as far as fitting in. Like, I, I can see him helping us. Uh, um, and, and then it's pretty neat. You know, I uh, comes in my office and sits down, and I'm watching film with him. And like for his first three years in college, he'd ask me to watch film. I'd be like, I'm not watching film because I don't coach your team. I don't know what the coaches are telling you. And for me to give you my opinions of things, it's not fair to you or them. And uh, but now I get to do it, and it's pretty neat. It, it, you go home, you feel you feel pretty good when when you uh, now. When the lights come on here in about a month and he doesn't play as much as he wants to play, I'm sure he's not going to be real happy with me. And that's, that's okay. That's the journey. That, that's the put the coach's hat on and, and he's going to have the player hat on. What I've told him is let's work really hard at not allowing the player-coach re, uh, relationship to eliminate the father-son relationship. It's okay if sometimes they kind of collide. But let's make sure that when they collide, we kind of get away from each, those two uh, relationships so we don't allow, he doesn't want me to treat him differently as a player because he's my son, which is the right thing to do. And I don't want him to hold grudges with me as a coach 
because he's my son. So, you know, that's, we'll figure that one out. I got no choice. I'm going to get punched in the head by my wife if I don't. So it's, I got to figure it out. <laughs> Coach, you spoke about how hard this past year has been for you guys and everyone. Are there, though, positives you can take away from this past year of overcoming adversity to oh. teach you guys in practice? Are you kidding me? I, I, when you're in the grind, and, and everyone uses the word grind, like I coach basketball, what kind of grind is that? You know what I mean? It's, but when you're in, the, when you're in, in, in your job mindset, you, you, don't, you rarely sit back and reflect and appreciate. When, when, when I was going through last year and, and I couldn't do anything right, and, and I shared this with uh, you guys back in the spring, and the voice that I would always call, and not just to, to, for him to tell me what to do, because half the time I didn't agree with his opinion, but hearing his voice gave me peace for me to make my decisions. I had lost in my high school coach, Shaky Rodriguez. And, and so I didn't have that voice to help me get through the difficulties of decision. It's not winning and losing, that's the easy part. It's the decision making that takes place on a daily basis. And, and not having that voice to give me the strength to go make the decisions I had to make. Um, and then uh, what gives me peace is my team, always has, always will. And for the first time ever, my team gave me doubt, not peace because we were playing differently, what I said earlier, than the way my teams had always played. And it allowed me to sit back and, and realize, like, I'm pretty darn lucky. Are you kidding me? I'm I, I've been a head coach for 29 years. It's the first bad year. You know, some people judge bad years on wins and losses. Bad years is when you don't do your job the right way. It's the first bad year I've had as a head coach. Can you imagine? You know, and then it allowed me to reflect here. I, I'm not going to keep repeating it because if, if you guys cared, you guys would repeat it. I've said them enough. All the good we did in building a program before last year. And I'm at peace with those things. If other people are not, that's their journey in life. I don't live my life to judge others. I really don't care who judges me. Um, but we had a lot of success, a lot of prideful things in that six-year period, things that hadn't happened here in a long, long time, okay? And then I reflected back to K-State, and just like here, we had the winningest six-year period since the 70s. At K-State, my five years as a head coach is the winningest five-year period in the history of the school. Are you kidding me? I, <laughs> I, I, it allowed me to be at peace with who I am. Because when you, when you live a public life, and I live one not by choice, but it's just part of my job, um, you, you have a responsibility to a lot of people. I have a responsibility to my players. I didn't do my job the right way for my players last year. Got a responsibility for my staff. I didn't do my job the right way for my staff last year. There's a whole lot of people that depend on me to make decisions to help them make their lives better. I didn't do that last year. I realized how lucky I am that I've been able to do that for so long. And, and it allowed me to recenter myself uh, and, and, and be excited about what's in front of me. And that's, that's kind of what I learned from last year. Not, not to feel sorry, man, I can't believe I was sick, we lost games, no. How lucky I've been. And that what I do works. And, and to be excited about getting back to those things. <clears throat> Frank, you just kind of touched on it, but moving forward from last year, do you change anything you do from a day-to-day -day basis when you guys are back in the building, or do you just kind of fall back on what you did before the COVID year, and how much does that change your day-to-day, -day, what you went through last year in terms of how you approach the team, how you approach your staff? Um, there's a lot of day-to-day -day stuff that, that you adjust because every team is different. People's personalities are different. New players, as I figure them out, I'm going to have to make some adjustments on the fly as to the day-to-day -day stuff. But what we can't do is we can't deviate from the fundamentals of who we are. I can't deviate from Frank Martin is as a person every single day or he, who he is as a basketball coach. Um, uh, I, I, I can't deviate from the things that are important to our basketball program from a fundamental standpoint. 
And, and, and that's what my enthusiasm for this year is, is for, for Frank to be Frank. Last year, Frank was not Frank. And I'm not using Frank as my name. I'm using Frank as the, 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 the ability to show you, tell you and show you. Um, I, I, you know, I, 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 I wasn't doing my job the right way. So I'm not being Frank. I, I'm going to do my job the way I know how to do it. And, and, uh, and then day to day, you know, it took me a couple of years to figure Sundarius out. You know, just it is what it is. It took me a couple of years, and Darius wouldn't let me in his freshman year. He's connected to me, but he wouldn't let me in his freshman year. And and you know, in a couple of years. And so when I started to figure him out, then I it, it, he allowed me to start helping him. And that's and that's kind of the journey. Now with this team, I, if, you know, I told those guys. I said, you and me, we don't have two years to figure this out. And this ain't about Frank Martin's job. James Reese doesn't have two years. Eric Stevenson, Eric's got a chance to make money playing this game. He's going to have a degree at this time, you know, next spring, summer sometime. I, he doesn't have to stay in college for five years. This will be his fourth year of playing basketball. A.J. Wilson doesn't have a second year. I, we owe it to those guys to, to, to figure out a way to hit the fast forward button in our relationship building process. And they, they've done that. They're, it is so much easier to build a relationship with a 22-year-old that's been in college for three or four years than it is when an 18-year-old that just shows up on your campus. Uh, those guys have an understanding for what has worked and hasn't worked for them where they were at before. They're kind of more on the path as to who they're going to be for the rest of their lives. 18, I don't know about you guys. When I was 18, you asked me a question. I'd be lucky if you got an answer from me. And not because I was being rude, I just had no idea. I had no idea. And, and so it's, it's uh, uh, you know, it's, it's the day-to-day -day stuff we have to hit and go. And, and I'm going to make mistakes, and they're going to make mistakes. We can't carry it to the next day. We, we both got to communicate, learn, and move forward. Frank, just looking at the, uh, the Van way. Van Halen. Yeah. Is that the Sammy Hagar Van Halen? No, 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 no. Uh, no, no, no. It's not Van Hagar. <laughs> Hagar's pretty good now. Just not with Van Halen. You say so. <laughs> uh, Frank, with so many new guys that you know kind of have to come together right away and, and start playing games, just how imperative is it that you can't get those guys together all the way? I mean, do you feel like you have maybe a two or three game, you know, set that you can mesh them together and say, okay, now I got who I got, or do you want to have that settled before the season starts? Yeah, it's, you know, Dave, I don't, I'm not one of those guys. I, I, I take pride in trying to be smart. Uh, if I start worrying about November on October the 8th, I got major issues. I can't do my job on October the 8th. I, I, and, and that's me every day. That's the logical math brain of mine. Uh, I, I, I deal with today. I go home, I reflect, I think, I figure out the problems, and then I try to come in the next day and solve the problems. Uh, and, and let's get better. And that's, that's kind of the simplistic way that I try to do my job and live my life every day. Um, uh, I, 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 I don't, I, I didn't, ask Chris Silva, how was that first practice and the December 2nd practice and the January 28th practice? the year after the Final Four. I, there's no different than pre-Final Four. Um, and um, so that's just the way I function. Um, I, don't, I don't fix problems in games. I fix problems in practice. Always have, and it's what I believe. I, it's like when I was, you know, I had a genius come up to me, not this year, a couple years ago, in a store and says, Coach, you know, I, I really like what you do, but man, you yell a lot. And I said, well, that's just who I am. I don't just yell to criticize. If you actually hear what I say, I'm very positive. He says, and you also talk about being a teacher. I said, yes, sir. He said, did you yell at your students? I said, well, I didn't have to communicate with my students over 15,000 people. And I didn't recruit my students either. I just kind of saw them three times a week for an hour a session. And, um, 
Uh, and when the day was over, they went home and never called me again until I saw them in class. These guys are on the phone all day, every day. It's a different connection. So there's, there's a different enthusiasm for, for the relationship. But at the end of the day, I never judge my students based on a test. I judge them and fix the test issues in the classroom before and after a test. I'm the same way with basketball. I don't, I don't wait for games, whether we win or lose, to make adjustments or decisions. I'm trying to fix that daily in practice. And um, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't I, the, the games, the games are one about one thing. They're not about learning. They're, that's an experience. How are you gonna get experience if you never do anything right? You don't deserve experience. Because when they leave here, they don't do everything right before the game, they're getting cut. They go work for whoever downtown, they don't do their job the right way, they're getting fired. It, you gotta learn how to do your job and, and how to learn before the game happens. And then when the game takes place, it is one sole commitment. Every single human being that's on that bench has to do everything and anything that they can to help us win that game. And, and that's it, that's the only thing we're getting from that game. Um, and so I, I'm, I don't, I don't look at the schedule and say, well, you know, if we can survive these three games and those two games we're playing lesser teams and, and I can play some guys. No, I'm going to play the guys that deserve to play. And I'm going to go into every game and make decisions to win that game and, and, and try and fix our problems when no one's watching. I know last year in the front court with your big men, once Frank went down, it was difficult to, to find consistency there. I know you've talked about Wildens and the growth he had at the end of the year. Looked like Trayvon Manot really slimmed down yeah. uh, when I saw him in the program, bringing Gray and, and Woodley. Just how, how do you feel about that group? How is that kind of coming together and what might it look like this season? Uh, we, we, we're big. <laughs> we, we're, we're big up there. It's, I mean, uh, uh, Josh Gray's a big man. Uh, you know, uh, Woodley is 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 really good. He's still trying to get in shape. He you see his high school team got slammed with the COVID stuff. I think they played like five games or something like that. And he just allowed himself to get out of shape. Uh, being homeschooled, very little practices. He just and uh, he's starting to get himself in shape. He's still not there, uh, but he he brings a physicality and a strength to the team. Um, A.J. Wilson, you're, you don't become the leading rebounder shot block guy at a pretty good basketball school uh, if you avoid physicality. Um, he, uh, he brings it to Wildens is strong as an ox right now. Um, you know, Wildens in high school just shot jump shots. And he's had to learn a lot like Chris Silva. Chris didn't know how to play in there when he got here. And, and he learned and made himself into an all-league player. Um, uh, Wildens is going through that journey right now. Uh, you know, uh, Trayvon is, uh, you got to understand, we got a Taekwon, a Trayvon, and a Javon. It, it is, I told my staff, can we recruit a Robert, a Peter, and a Joe? It's a heck of a lot easier. Uh, Trayvon um, has changed his body around. He's, his, uh, I, what I share with him all the time is you've worked really hard to make yourself a Division I athlete. Now trust it and go play like it. You know, just be more explosive, which he, he is. He runs better. He, he's in a much better place. And, and the physicality of the game, because he's really intelligent and skilled, knows how to get his shot off in the paint. Now dealing with that Josh Gray, Taekwon Woodley, uh, Wilden's physicality is making him better prepared. Um, and then you know, I'll tell you who else has had a real good preseason, you know, Benson. He's taken a huge step forward. And um, ask him, I don't want to speak for him, ask him when, he, uh, when, when he's made available to you. He, he's, we're really physical in there. Like I'm, I'm having to call people, the dogs off sometimes uh, because of the physicality. Um, it's uh, and that that gives me peace because that's when my teams are good. We got that, and when my teams are good because we got that, I'm at peace so I can coach better. And uh, uh, it's and we're old-fashioned. 
we're still going to throw it to our big guys in the paint, and we're going to pull fouls on your team, and we're going to go shoot free throws. And just go back and do the research. And there's Thornwell. If he hadn't been suspended, he would have led the country in free throw attempts. Chris Silva led the country in free, the top five in free throw attempts. Jacob Pullen led the country in free throw attempts. And their team's always won. So it's, uh, it's what we do. And by the way, I, I, I just saw Phil, so I can't help myself if I don't make a football analogy. Uh, the best quarterback in the NFL is still the guy that runs the least. Why? Because they got the best offensive line, got two running backs that run between the tackles. So it's last time I checked, he keeps winning Super Bowls, like going out of style. And the next time he leaves the pocket might be the first in 10 years. So it's it's about that. It's not about everything out there. It's about that. What's in front of you. And when we got guys that play through that, we're good. Uh, you made the decision to go back uptown next week and do the event on Main Street, which you guys did yeah, a couple yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what what uh, what led you guys to want to do that, you and Don, and want to get back up there and into that community and 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 kind of try and connect with the community? One of the greatest things I've ever heard anyone say was Nick Saban this summer, when he said the dinosaurs didn't adapt. Look what happened to them. I thought that was powerful because it's real. And so why do I answer what you just said with what I said? Everyone used to have an October 15th, first day of practice, midnight madness. It was a big celebration. It got old because we all start practices on different days. And, and, and let's come into the arena to watch guys dunk basketballs and play a bad pickup game for 30 minutes at midnight. Man, we got to work in the morning. It, it's, you know, it got old. And, and so I, when I got here, just hit rewind. When I got here, we used to do nothing to tip off the basketball season. And it drove me nuts. And I was very adamant behind the scenes with administration that we're doing our teams an injustice by not doing something to celebrate them before the season starts. Um, and um, we went over to Fort Jackson and had a midnight madness event in their facility. Sold out with soldiers everywhere. It was awesome. And my idea had always been, let's throw a court down in five points. And I say five points because that's where the college kids are at. And for whatever reason, the slope of the street in five points is not conducive for a court. And two years ago, the thought was, hey, you want to try this on downtown? I think we found an area we can do it. And I said, hell yeah. It's, you know, and it was a hit. I don't know how many of you guys were there. It was fun. It was fun. It, it, you know, and, and here's the thing. People now are in an area, so it's not at midnight. They're in an area on a Friday night where they can come over and enjoy, whether you're an 18-year-old college freshman or you're a 57-year-old attorney. You come downstairs. You enjoy. It's a great atmosphere. You actually see both teams. You're like, holy cow, these guys are fun. And, and when I say guys, I'm including our women in that too, or in general. And then when it's over at 745, if you're 18, be smart. Go do what 18 year olds do on a Friday night. If you're 57, you go to one of your spots down the block and you do what you do when you're 57. And then you still can get home and go to bed and still wake up the next day and be a normal human being. And um, I, I thought it was awesome what we did two years ago. And I'm, I'm unbelievably excited. I hope, I hope you guys and our fans are excited too to come out and actually, you know Dom's team, they return everybody. But they're all, I sit here and watch them practice. They're better. So I, it's going to be fun to watch them. And then when you guys see us come out, like when you guys, you're going to sit back and say, holy cow, these dudes are big. And, and, and you're going to see them kind of play and interact, which kind of gives you a little insight as to the personality. And maybe it allows you to see why I'm excited. It's not just a talent thing. It's those guys enjoy playing, enjoy going out in front of people. And, um, and it, so, so it's fun to be around. So I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic that our school agreed to do that again. You guys are putting me in a good mood here before I go deal with our guys here in about an hour. Frank, I, want, I wanted to ask about the physicality. It seems like 
that's kind of a want to, an attitude that you've got to have. And when you lose it, I mean, who's bringing it back? Is it the, is it the returners who are so committed to being here? Is it the new guys have coming in with the right attitude? How does, how does that return after it's not there? Um, we just lost it. We lost. That's that's something you deal in recruiting. Here, I'm gonna give you a little snap. Kind of. What's the word I'm looking for? I was I almost say Snapchat. I, this the social media crap. Snapchat? Like a little snippet yeah. of our staff. Okay. We lose Underwood after my first year. Then we lose Lamont Evans. Then I lose Matt Figger. So now. I've got Bruce Shingler in his second year. I got Chuck Martin in his first year. They're recruiting players that are good players. But I did a poor job of telling them, because at the end of the day, I'm the one that signs off on who we bring in here. The, the assistants don't sign off. It's me. I signed off on guys without expressing to them, I don't care their talent level. I need them to be good at this. And we brought guys in here that necessarily that's not what they did. And you look at Hassani Gravit. Hassani didn't like that. He that physicality part of it, and I'm again, it's not fouling, hitting, unbelievably talented. But he didn't buy into that. Sindarius, Dwayne, Justin, all those guys, they won't let him practice. Like, yo, Hassani, get out, man. And I'd put Hassani and say, no, 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 coach, man, I ain't messing with this dude. Get him out. And because he didn't respect that physicality. And I'm trying to get him reps to, to, to make him compete, to make him grow. They were like, no, this is late in the year, not early, because he had fought that internally. Well, now we go through, obviously, win a bunch of games, and now we got Chris Silva. Well, Frank Booker didn't look like it. He played with unbelievable physicality. And you saw him, what he looked like when he came through the door, and he didn't look like much. But that's what allowed him to adapt and grow so fast in our system and gain everyone's respect. So now Hassani continued to grow, even though – Sindarius and them had left. And, but now we lose Chris and we lose Hassani. And now we got Kotsar left. And Mike tried really hard, but physicality was not one of his strengths. Did everything you ask him to do, but he didn't have that mm, that I'm talking about. And, and we started losing it because we had a bunch of new guys that that's not innate in them. And that's on me. Uh, but we still won enough games. We can make it best we can by practicing. Then last year we got away from practicing, so our physicality went away. And, and you know, that's one of the places Keyshawn has grown a lot. Everyone sees him dunk balls and say, whoo. When he got here, that physicality was not part of who he is. And, and because we've banged him across the head so much, he's grown in that tremendously. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited that we've got some guys in place that, that Wilden's, he stayed because he believes in it. And now he's out there doing it with a lot more confidence than he has in the past. And we got more guys that – Eric Stevenson, he, he, the more physical, the better he plays. Uh, James Reese, physicality is not bothering him. It's who he is. Uh, you know, and it, it's, it's kind of uh, permeated – really quickly on a team and and uh um but but that's kind of the, the the snippet as to how we lost it and we refocused when when we had to go re like here's the one thing you guys didn't ask me and i'm just going to share it with you on uh, most years when you have nine first year guys you sit around and you're like holy cow we're all in the same boat Every one of us around the country, very few people can say, I return my team. I, you know, I, I know this. I return Jermaine Cousinard, an established double-figure scorer. Keyshawn Bryan, an established double-figure scorer. A.J. Wilson, an established double-figure scorer. Eric Stevenson, an established double-figure scorer. James Reese, an established double-figure scorer. I've, I've got some good parts in place uh, from, from established and who they are offensively. Uh, and now we got some guys that 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 physicality we identified. That's why we brought them in. Chico physicality. He's comfortable with that. Established double figure score in college basketball. Um, so so there's there's a comfort with with what they can do offensively. 
but there's also a, a desire to, to go out there with a physicality that gives me peace. Uh, 